Okay, so I'm going to begin now, Intellectuals and Society, by Thomas Sowell. So I have his new revised edition, I think it's called. Yeah, I have his new revised edition, just came out this year. Um, most of the quotations I have taken from his 2009 first edition, which I read when I was doing my master's. Uh, so, but I grabbed this one from, well, I had to uh, order it. They didn't have it. And I read the new chapters, and I made quotations on those on my laptop here. And then I'm going to talk about, I've, so I I've, I've went through all the quotations. I've taken out the good ones that I want to talk about. And I put them into sections, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll lay that out right now. So I've got an intro section, which is going to be this video. I've got an economic section. A major point section. I that's a good title I could do for that one. Really good stuff in there. Um, let's oh truth. He has some points about truth and how intellectuals uh, there. Well, there are some that uh, have a, have their own theory of truth. Sometimes called multiple truths or no objective truth. That's pretty much the thing there. Uh, there's a section on law. It's a small one. Section on politics, that's also small. And then conclusion quotes. Yes, that's it. And yes, oh, and I was going to mention real quick, I did get in, You in the previous video you saw that I was waiting for two bucks, I did get in. There's um, Ideology and Ideologists by, I don't know, Fear, Fear or something like that. And I also got in Public Intellectuals by Posner. I haven't read them yet, but I will uh, eventually... And I'll do annotations on that, which means quotations. You pull out quotations, good ones. And I'll do a video for that. So this video is going to be on the introduction to intellectuals and society, or introductory quotes. They're not all from the introduction. And I will quote page numbers and which book it's from, because some of these are from the 09, and some of these are from the revised edition, which is 2011, actually. So the first quote, uh, just a, a small one. This is from uh, 09, page 29. He says that intellectual elites ha are credentialed ignorance. And um, what he means by that, of course, is uh, you get a credential as a professor or, or whatever, and it gives some people license to ramble and to rant uh, and post their opinions, it perhaps puts their opinions on a higher plane than they they should be they should have. And so, if you're a doctor, doctor whatever, then people think that they should take you seriously and that you have something intelligent to say. So that's what he by, that's what he means by credential ignorance. So moving on now, this is in the new edition, uh, page V, Roman numeral. Uh, V. Quote, there has probably never been an era in history when intellectuals have played a larger role in society than the era in which we live. So he just gives some uh, and he gives some importance to, to discussing this and writing the book. So uh, also in the revised edition, page 524, near the end of the book. Growth of um, okay, this isn't a quote yet. Growth of intellectual influence came with quote the spread of literacy and spread of political power down the socio-economic period. Now, this I think this is a, a pretty interesting idea that I had never thought of before, and I, I think it's worth talking about. Um, in the past, those who went to school were largely um, children from rich or autocratic parents, meaning that uh, royalty that were in government. And with, as, Tom, as uh, Saul says, with the spread of literacy, um, it spread political power down the socio-economic period. What this has done is that more and more people are now involved in political power or involved in politics, whereas before it was merely run by, the, by royalty. Now, I think this next quote is, is on the same point here. So, quote, uh, this, is, this is still on uh, page 524. Quote, along with the benefits of free and democratic society comes a special danger from the vulnerability of a trusting public to the fashions and presumptions embodied in the visions of the intelligentsia seeking their place in the sun. So more on this point. It also has, 
allowed for intellectuals that were non, in, not in the government and not part of the autocratic government. Uh, there are more public intellectuals now. Before, there were no public intellectuals. There were perhaps crazy people in the public, um, doomsayers in the public, but the voice of the people in some uh, cultures and countries, and certainly the rulers of the people, were always government, always the royalty. With, as the quote says, the spread of literacy, this has allowed more and more people to be involved in power, involved in decisions, and the birth of public intellectuals. This point is merely to show the birth of the public intellectual. So before, where most countries were ruled by demagogues or tyrants of some kind, and the people didn't really have much to say other than rising up once in a while when they got really mad, now, in, as Sobel says, in free and democratic societies, a public, the, the, the pers a person or a person in the public has to be very careful on what they believe. They have to think about these things. Now they have a choice, and now they have to exercise that choice and exercise their own thinking. And so, um, their time has not eroded the intellectual or the person in control or the decision maker of a country. What time has what has changed over time is that now the common person, not in the royalty or in government or part of the dictatorial government, now they have to consider the um, the knowledge and the opinions of not only the rulers of the time, but also those who rise up up from the public who have opinions such as intellectuals. So that is his point there. Now, moving on to page 525 from 2011 edition. Quote, Not since the days of the divine right of kings has there been such a presumption of a right to direct others and constrain their decisions, largely through expanded powers of government. Everything from economic central planning to environmentalism epitomizes the belief that third-party elites know best and should be empowered to override the decisions of others, including, in square brackets, other people's values and choices, in square brackets. This is at the heart of the vision of the anointed. So, that's a separate book, and I'm going to get to it, but uh, that, I think, is an amazing point. I think that attacks a lot of what's going on now. It attacks a lot of um, leftist policies, which I don't even use that word much anymore. I just say central planners. It really hits hard, I think, on those who believe that they can construct a utopia that they're going to force others to live in. And I think that's terrible, and I think that history has seen enough of it. Next quotation, page 529 of the revised edition. In recent higher, educa recent higher education has found, quote, students selected more for their mental abilities than for their socioeconomic origins. This is also, this is a, a, a very interesting idea, uh, much like a, a few quotes ago. So the point of this is that those who went to school uh, in, in history were largely only from rich classes. And so people have, the rich classes have children, usually fewer than, than the other, other classes. And those kids, no matter, unless they were born with severe disabilities, those kids went to school. So you'd get a mix of kids that went to school and merely because they were part of the upper classes. And of course, also those who could pay. So that's kind of implied people, those who, to get into school, the Latin grammar schools, for example, in Europe, uh, you had to pay money. You had to be rich. You had to, uh, so. But now, with education far easier to enter, you're getting... Um, it was a mix of kids. But nowadays, where school can be easily, uh, you can easily get into school with uh, student loans and scholarships and all that, which did not exist in the past, you are getting more, who goes to school now? Well, it is a tendency for higher IQ people to go to school. And that is a significant change from the past. 
the, the past merely had a mix of kids that went to school. You were born of a rich family, you went to school. But nowadays, there's an extraction of higher IQ in general, average, on average, higher IQ people going to, going to university and then living a upper middle class or higher class or upper class life. This is a major change because before that, higher IQ kids were born all the time in the past, but didn't go to school. They lived in their communities. Perhaps they were inventors. Perhaps they were community leaders. But nowadays, higher IQ kids are being extracted from communities and going off to university and usually not returning to where they used to live. They go off and find a job somewhere, right? So that's a very interesting uh, idea, and I wanted to pull that out of that book and talk about it. So Saul will, on the same point, Saul will continues. Uh, not a quote yet. So there are obvious benefits to this, but what are the consequences? This is the important part. So quote, when a society divided into socioeconomic compartments is replaced by a society divided into cognitive compartments, there is still a social isolation. End quote. Uh, and then I, I write here, of the higher IQ college-bound population from general society, concentrating them and preventing them from under, understanding life in the general society. The point is those higher merit people are taking are taken out of their life context wherever they came from and will be unlikely to return thus further harming the social context they came from the point that was i i believe that Sawell's point that's not a quote just the where i where i said quote unquote is the quote but um i believe his idea was that kids grow up in an area they're intelligent, they go off to university, usually, more, at least more and more today. And what happens is they don't return, they forget their life in, in previously, and then they become public intellectuals and now have an opinion. That's, I think, Saul's point. So, on the same point here, page 530, in other words, the, quote, social sealing off of a cognitive elite from the lives of the great majority of society in which they live. And I called it an extraction. So that's the introductory quote to get us going. Uh, next sections will be economic.